if I have as my raw stock inch and three eighths, I could just about barely clean up the outside of it and I'm ready to mill. So with that in mind, I'm going to just clean up a little bit of the surface and then put it straight to the mill. But while we're in the lathe, we're going to face it off and drill the 5 8 hole. We're about ready to mill the hex onto the end of the draw bar now, but I've got a little machinist trivia question for you, if you can stand it. In The Wizard of Oz, when Dorothy and the Scarecrow find the Tin Man and he's all seized up, do they bring him back to life with an oil can looking like this, or looking like this? And we're just going to do that five more times. Well, that doesn't really quite look like a hex. I think I might have to do some fixing up. Okay, that looks pretty good. The draw bar is in the shell mill holder now, and I've left the draw bar intentionally a little too long so that I could then cut it to length. The way I can measure out how much I ought to remove from the length of the draw bar is now I'll just push it forward until the back of it stops. So that's 740 I could take off of this. So how long ought a draw bar be on the Nichols mill? Maybe it's a little tougher to say for the case of NMTB or Cat40, even though they have the same thread size this is the main difference between the two of them. It's a little bit longer on an MTB than it is on a Cat 40, but this draw bar, if I take into account the taper as well, I'd say it's a quarter of an inch over one foot, and either of these will thread in just fine and get tight on the machine. Maybe what I could say with a little bit more confidence is how long ought a Nichols draw bar be. And this one is 11 and a half inches, again with the taper. So the whole idea of having a taper on this side of the end of the draw bar is that it will center itself in the spindle. I suppose you could have just a a hard shoulder, but it will appear to kind of wobble around when it's tightened. Probably will do no harm, but it just kind of looks funny. And of course, I've made one of these. Uh, inch and 3 16 socket on this side, and a little piece of brass on this side, strictly for for mounting and demounting arbors. Now that we have a longer overarm on the mill, we can run longer arbors. This is an NMTB A-style arbor, inch and a quarter, and of course we've got the ice cream cone from hell, also NMTB. The only problem before we can start running this arbor is that our arbor support will not work with this one. The pilot is 23 30 seconds and pilot for Nichols Arbors is 9 16 But that's where this comes in. We're going to turn this one into a NMTB Arbor support.
So we've sacrificed the bearing, and that's fine. You can still get these bearings pretty easily. But we've saved the rest of it. Looks like we've been here before, huh? You know, it's a good thing that I made two of these, even if one didn't come out right. Because I didn't know back then that I might be making a different style uh, arbor support. This is going to be our bearing. Um, I couldn't find any uh, roller bearing or, uh, you know, any bearing at all that has a inside dimension of 23, 30 seconds. So, uh, this oil light bearing is close enough. We'll machine out this old sleeve and then machine the oil light bearing to 23, 30 seconds. Uh, this time, you know, especially since we're using a different overarm, we're going to do this differently uh, in a way that I couldn't do last time. Right now, the overarm itself is loose in the machine. I've loosened these two screws, and this is something uh, Greg Mankey uh, mentioned to me as another way of doing it. When I advance the y-axis of the mill, the overarm itself will slide in and out of the head. I've changed my mind a little bit. I've switched to a 7 8 drill. That's going to make this a lot faster of a job. By some strange stroke of luck, when I drilled this with that 7 8 drill bit, it overdrilled it, but it overdrilled it to one thousandth to half a thousandth undersize of the outer diameter of this bushing. In other words, that twist drill brought me right to size. So it's going to be, this is kind of a lazy way out, but I'm going to take advantage of it, of it being like that. I'm going to take this out and shrink it, this into there just like that. Okay, I think I've got the color I'm looking for now, and let's drop this thing in there. All right, that's... Here I'm about see, to learn I'm... why you should not shrink fit oil light bushing. Okay. You saw all the smoke come up. That's the oil burning out of it. Hopefully that's not all the oil. Anyway, I'm going to saw off the end of that. The ideal RPM for machining oil light bronze with high-speed steel is something like 5,000 RPM. Uh, since this machine will do 1350, we'll just max out the machine at 1350. And this is the behind the eight ball situation again, so I'd better get it right this time. We're going for 2330 seconds, uh, 0.71875. We're going to go for, we're going to really go for 718. So that, that I expect to be our final pass. We were at 715 and a half and I just took off another two and a half thousandths. So, I feel good about this. Mm -hmm. 
All right, there's 718. And it's 718 and like uh, 718 and a tenth. <clears throat> so that's one good one. Let's get one just a little deeper. 717 and and 7 tenths. We measured the, sh the uh, pilot on the arbor to be 7, 17, and 3 tenths. So based on those two measurements, this thing should be bored to our correct size. So now let's see how this new arbor support we made will fit on the machine when we've got an NMTB A-style arbor in there. It fits just fine. And now, because I guess I don't know any better, uh, we're going to put another pointy 60 degree center in there. I had it already laid out with the uh, die cut. You know, you've got to plan for success. Just like the other one, there's going to be a number three taper pin to hold the 60 degree center in place. <laughs> There the reamer has exited the other side of the hole. And I can start to test fit the pin. Yeah, that's it. Okay, a little more persuasion with a, a punch this time and now it's just below the surface on both sides pretty much evenly. I'm getting used to this paper pin thing. <laughs> I kinda like it. Anyway. Will the magnet attract it? Nope. So it's reached the, the um, transformation stage, I believe. Anyway, let's quench the thing. What you didn't see me do in uh, the last Arbor Support video was the tempering. Um, the light blue color, after, when I was uh, tempering it back then, was there for just a little while, and uh, I think we'll use butane instead, that ought to be slower. There it is, cooled off, tempered, and uh, just polished up again. And we can line up the two witness marks I made and put this thing back together. that, I declare this project done. Really, uh, I would say the big project is done now, too. Well, I hope you enjoyed this kind of long video. This will be the end of season two, we'll call it. And you like this song? That will be the last time you hear it. We'll have a new couple of songs and new videos, new projects coming in a couple of weeks. Catch you later.